So in case you wonder what I'm doing, we have this path which runs from the house to the gate and the back gate takes us to the village. The other side of that wall is the village road. And Susie's often wondered whether there are any cobbles under here. And so I thought I'd do a quick exploratory dig. It's um, the ground is it's, it's as soft as it's ever going to be, to be quite honest with you. So today's the day to do some digging. Um, I've done three little areas, gone down quite deep, found no evidence. So that'll do me. Yeah, I've gone down about a good 12, 14 inches. It, there's nothing there. So, but it only took me five minutes and now we know. So I put it all back. <laughs> okay, well that didn't take long, five minutes to dig it up and fill it back in again. But at least we know now, it would have been really lovely if we'd had a cobbled path all the way down here. But uh, not to be, but never mind, I've done it now. And I couldn't have done this three or four days ago. We've both been fighting something off this week. A uh, bit short of breath, some sort of viral thing, but we're okay now. So I don't know what that was. There you go. Never mind. Okay, I'm in the barn, the open barn, and that's where we've recently propped up this uh, great big beam. However, now right in the middle of the screen, you can see there's two pieces that are joined and they're pegged. One of the pegs has come out, one of the others is coming out. And where it means, meets this apex, you can see that mortise and tenon joint, it's been slowly coming out. Now, I think this is pretty much historical. I think it's probably been like that for many, many years. Uh, where that mortise and tenon is, uh, all that wood colour is exactly the same, which means it's had exactly the same amount of light at it uh, for fading. So if there was new, fresh-looking wood, I'd know that has suddenly moved. Um... But the problem is, of course, with this movement of this other beam, it might just have moved it slightly more. I don't know. Anyway, it's a job that we've always intended to do. Tony's coming over. He's got a couple of acros, which we're going to bolt together and then try to prop that up in some way. But Tony doesn't like being filmed, so I suspect that I won't be able to film any more. Um, but anyway, I'll show you how we progress. So Tony came over and um, his friend Jeffrey came along with him. Uh, you, you remember Tony and Jeffrey were the two guys that um, installed the log burner for us a few months ago, about 14, 15 months ago now. And they really know their stuff. I mean, Jeffrey was in scaffolding and Tony was in construction. So the two of them know what they're doing. Um, you know, Tony's worked on some big old um, projects uh, as a supervisor and foreman. Um, uh, the Thames Barrier in London, the Channel Tunnel. So, you know, I'm in good hands. And of course, Rob, he, he had his own construction business as well in commercial buildings. So, you know, I'm in really good hands here. So I'm very happy. Um, that's 4.95 metres, very high. Uh, but these two acros will be absolutely fine, bolted together, very strong bolts. Um, and all the compression is downwards. So they're not, you know, it's not doing that. Uh, and these are British acros. Uh, they're just that bit thicker and a bit more solid than the French counterparts. There's nothing wrong with the French ones. They're doing their job. Uh, but these are really strong. And they're in, in that respect, I guess they're that bit better. Uh, but either way, I'm happy. So, yeah, slowly but surely, we're, we're securing this barn. And there's a bit of work to do in the other two barns. But... Uh, we're starting to get a measure of it now and it's a job I've been putting it off but um, yeah I can't really put it off any longer so I'm, I'm, I'm very pleased now very very pleased indeed which is why I'm standing underneath here I can and I'm happy yeah that's obviously um, a huge relief now uh, I can uh, sleep a bit easier but I thought I'd show you this gate in more detail if you remember it was sitting lying on the floor and the other ones behind me there um, and I had to get it out of the way to put this acker up. Um, but I was going to chop it all up and take it down the dechettery. Um, and I probably still will do that because it's not really usable. It's rotten, you know, all these slats here. Some of them are snapped. There's big gaps there. This is, you know, it, 
there's not a lot you can do. I think somebody suggested in the comments that maybe we could use it as a, um, a compost um, frame. Um, it's really, honestly, it's not worth the effort to try and do anything. I did wonder if I could cut it shorter and it'd be some sort of picket fence. But again, I've got to do a lot of work to make it look pretty. Um, but anyway, what's what, what I th thought was interesting, now that I've picked it up, I've I found this flap on here and there's a little box behind. So that is a very crudely built uh, letterbox, uh, which suggests that this has come off our main gates down here. And we did wonder whether it'd come off the other side of the lane, um, uh, the meadow, because there's an entrance there. Uh, we also believe there used to be gates on the entrance to our walled garden uh, because there's some hinges still in the wall. Uh, but with the letterbox, it would suggest that it's come off that. So I thought I'd quickly measure it up and have a look. I did, um, yeah, I did wonder about cutting it off and having some sort of picket fence somewhere. But, you know, it's, it's at some point you've got to give up. Uh, there's a metal uh, piece of metal coming all the way down here. I can take that off. It's bolted on. Hopefully I'll get that off because you never know when you might need a bit of metal. Um, but the rest of it, it's... It's not worth saving. But let's go and have a look. I'll measure it up and let's have a look down at the gate there. See if it did come off there, just out of interest. Yep, that works. That's uh, the same size, 65 uh, inches. So yeah, it definitely came off here then. Um, you might not be able to see it from there, but this is falling apart. This is all rotten. I mean, these gates are, are really on their last legs. Um, so they're going to have to be replaced at some point. But obviously those white ones, or presumably those white ones, were here before they made these. Um, we'd love to get some wrought iron you know, some ornate um, gates, as you see, with chateaus and nice uh, properties. Uh, but that's for another day. But anyway, so that's where the white gate has come from. Um, but I think it's got to go to the dishettery, sadly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> At some point, you've got to give up. Historical or not, you've got to give up sometime. Anyway, you've seen couple of horror stories in this barn. Do you want to see another one? Okay, and it concerns this main apex beam that's running from the back there, all the way back there, to this end. So if I show you it, all's looking pretty normal, all's looking pretty normal, but now all of a sudden something strange is happening. And that beam ends in midair and is joined by another piece. So if I step back, I'll see if I can get it all in in one go. Yeah, they obviously didn't have a piece of wood long enough. So they've joined it with these two metal braces. And I presume that's been there a long, long time. But at some point, I want to make sure that's propped up because that is the house. And if that gives way, we've got a problem. So we need a few acro props here to support this beam here and then get one or two under this as well. And that's not the only one. And I've just brought you into the middle barn and there's two more. Just come over to Rob and Susie. Um, we're looking after the cats while they're away. They're back tomorrow. There's Max here. You can hardly see him, he's camouflaged. That's No-Nos because she sounds like she's saying No-No. 
This is Rue. So Max and Rue were two of the kittens they took in. This is Polly, the other kitten. There were four that were dumped and this handsome tiger who they brought over from the UK with them. Um, and his back and legs are held together with titanium because he got run over before they moved here. So he's not that old, but he's a bit stiff. And this is Teasel, who also came over from the UK with them. Pretty Teasel, aren't you? She's got lovely nature. Whilst we're here, we're going to take you into what Rob and Susie call the Grange. And uh, there's something very interesting in here that uh, goes back to the time when this chateau was built. So we'll take you in there. It's going to be a bit dark, but uh, Rob and Susie have said they don't mind us filming, so uh, they're happy for us to wander around. Uh, the first thing we want to show you is their pressoir, which is all put together, not like ours dismantled. And this is actually full of bottles. Plus, they've got all these bottles here. Don't know if you can see that in the dark. So this, this is what they call the Grange, an outbuilding. Um, this isn't what we've brought you in here to see, so we'll show you that. So this is a bit dark in here. There's lots of bits of wood. Um, at the end, they've got loads of barrels there. They've probably all got woodworm. Um, but this, this is what we wanted to show you. I hope you can see it in the dark. Right, we'll come round to the other side because there's a bit more light. So this buggy was built, I think, as a wedding present, um, as was the chateau. These wheels, are, you can see they're not as big as ours, but it's all together. I mean, the, so you've got these feet here which they would have used to get on and off the buggy, I, I assume. But, yeah, it's amazing. It'd be nice to see it all restored, really. Yeah, it has got the hood on still, but it is rotting, unfortunately. And Susie showed me the other day, on here there's a little bird. I don't know if you can see that. It... It looks in such good condition, it's probably hardly ever been used. It goes back to 1914, when this place was built. So, yeah, it's lovely. Last week uh, you saw me in the open barn with a bit of an emergency um, with a broken lintel etc 
uh, but it's prompted me to take a look through all the wood that's in there um, to actually clear that place. Um, so I found two long lengths of wood um, sort of on the way to rotten as opposed to being completely rotten. Um, and, but there was another piece which was sort of nearly that size and so by the time I've trimmed the ends off, the rotten stuff off, I've ended up with two three metre lengths and then a metre length at each end. So this, this first raised bed of ours will be three metres by one. And just behind me, we're going to start a row of beds all the way down there. That'll be a sort of long term project over a period of time, adding to them each year. Uh, but they're going to be four metres long. So this one is going to be offset, but it allows us to get around here without um, being impeded. Um, and this wood, it's, it's not brilliant, but it was either a question of chopping it up for firewood or making use of it in some way. And this seems like the most sensible use. So I'm going to get these last um, two ends uh, screwed in and then we can start filling this uh, with soil and stuff. And then um, we'll have our first raised bed. Well, that's a start. Um, our first raised bed and it's free, uh, free wood, so might as well use it. Um, so I've put a lot of these twigs that you saw me getting out of the barn recently, put all that in there, put some soil on top. I've taken the soil from this bed here. It was running that way. Uh, weeds and all, so they've gone in. Uh, carbon on top, so what we'll do is um, over the next few days, we'll get some compost on there. Um, and hopefully this cardboard, it's been nicely soaked over the winter, so you want it nice and soft so anything we plant can get through. Um, and hopefully the fact that um, all that's now buried under there and won't be able to get the light uh, should um, stop the weeds. Um, somebody was asking in the questions actually, how did we get on last year with the cardboard? And it was successful in one bed and not in another. And these two beds here for example i did those at the same time yet we got a lot of weeds in this one but hardly any in that one 
and I use the same method. So I don't know, but I think um, part of the problem is you can put cardboard on top, but the light's still getting in through the sides, uh, whereas this uh, should stop that. So we'll see. I mean, obviously I've, I've not weeded it first uh, before putting that lot in there, so there's a load of weeds in there, but hopefully uh, we'll keep them down. Um, but we haven't really much choice. We want to get on. It's the beginning of March. So anyway, that's been a good start. So yeah, we'll try and get one or two more as we go. How many we'll get in this year? I don't know really. Um, it's, it's filling them and covering them up, etc. Um, getting all the material to go in them. Obviously these beds can be dug over and go in there. Um, so we'll just keep working our way down and then every year we'll add to them and then We'll hopefully have a whole row here behind the camera. So yeah, but that's a good start. Um, we're just over at Robin Susie's um, cat sitting until Tuesday. It's Friday night now. Um, I'm staying the night here, but Rose goes back to be with the dogs. And it's our third anniversary in our place so we thought we'd buy a bottle of bubbly and celebrate, but we're not at home. I, ironically, yeah. We're not at home. <laughs> we'll celebrate it somewhere else. <laughs> yeah, in their chateau. Yeah, three years ago. Mm. This very day. Don't spill any. Oh, I won't, don't worry. <laughs> there you go, honey. Cheers. 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 How's that? Yeah. Perfect. So I got um, four more lavenders out of the bushes along the beds there. Um, right. They'd sort of rooted themselves. So what I do is I chop them off and then uh, fill in the gaps here. So And they're quite a decent size. Yeah, yeah, they should uh, be okay, really. And then the other cuttings that we've got... Yeah, will, they're will quite bigger. small still, so... So we'll fill in all the gaps eventually. Yeah. Anyway, well, I hope you enjoyed watching that. And thank you to everybody who bought us coffees this week. Uh, it's really wonderful. Thank you. And supported us on our wish list as well. Yes, 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 thank you. Yeah, it's brilliant. And if you could uh, click like and subscribe, it would help us greatly. And with that, we shall see you next time. Bye. Bye.